Welcome to COSI, the number one science museum in the nation, according to USA Today, four years in a row. We make science come alive for everybody from the womb to the tomb. Come here, we'll keep the light on for you like Motel 6. I was a kid that loved to play. Handheld video games broke onto the scene. So for you young people watching this, this is the original handheld Sony PlayStation. So it takes these nine-volt batteries, and back then they weren't energy efficient. That's the first time I realized this thing we called electricity that as a kid I was taking for granted. You click on a light, it's there. You plug something, it works. That there's something way more mystical interesting that's happening behind the walls. And I was like, that sparked my curiosity. Therein lies the birth of my love of the natural world, and that's why I got into science. This is how I got into science. My parents are my heroes. They were just amazing, loving parents who provided all kinds of opportunities for their kiddos. Pat Tedford in college was just a great kind of um, inspiring educator. She wrote this on one of my, on my first paper. She said, you have a love of language and you have the power of the pen. So she encouraged me that way. So even though I'm not a major author of any kind, I love writing to this day. Ed Over was a calculus teacher, but he made math elegant. It, you went from, oh, here's a formula, understand this formula, to here is the art and language of this thing called mathematics. And you saw the beauty in it, and you learned a lot easier. So those were two kind of early on educators. Dr. Wayne Lapp, who's the first person to teach me immunologic research as an undergraduate student in the summer. I owe so much of any success that I've gained in the scientific enterprise to Dr. Brian Ward. He's just an amazing individual. What brought me to Columbus was COSI. Being literate in science is so important. Several reasons. Job opportunities. Everybody's interested in having some kind of job or career at some point. Science is literally everywhere on planet Earth, and it should be for everyone. From a more philosophical standpoint, if you can't read, if you're what's called illiterate, if you can't count, you know, if you go buy something in a store and you can't count change, you enumerate, like that's uncomfortable. But for some reason, this great nation and much of the world, it's okay to not know anything about science. It's our universe, it's our natural world, it's all around us, people should learn. Like our entire world is made possible because men, women, people who have dedicated decades of their lives to discover all kinds of things and give us our tech and give us all our stuff, and we don't know any of them. Scientists need to own part of the problem. Engage more people, share why you're so excited about what you're doing in a way that people can understand it and you might get people to feel more comfortable about science. The more we work together, the more we collaborate, the better impact we can have. That resonates so much with me. So there's a, just a natural affinity for that concept and just how I live my life. Coming to Ohio, learning about you know Ohio and Columbus. You hear the incredible work on aviation. But the story I'm always told is Wright Brothers. And then of course you got, you know, Senator John Glenn, you know, obviously phenomenal. Then of course you got um, from Wapa Canetta, you have Neil Armstrong, right? I'm hearing about all these, they're amazing people, but I'm hearing all these stories of these men in aviation uh, and, you know, of these white men in aviation. As a person of color, you know, I've heard, okay, there's some Tuskegee men that have a history here too, so that's nice, but that, you could have picked anybody. You could have called the Spirit of Columbus. You could name it after anybody. But to be named after a woman and the first female to fly around the world as a person of color, to be to receive an award named after another trailblazer or a first of, just, it, it, it moved me. I mean, I'm getting even choked up thinking about it. Like, I'm just so honored and humbled that the community thought that this was something appropriate. So it's absolutely an honor to be selected by the Columbus Foundation to receive the 2023 Spirit of Columbus Award named after none other than Jerry Mock. So I could not be more excited and honored and humbled. So thank you. Long live the Spirit of Columbus. Ode to an award. The Spirit of Columbus. Honored, so humbled.